Hey guys, I'm Double Archangel, welcome to my channel. In this week's video, we will do a tutorial on how I use the camera raw filter in Photoshop for photo manipulation art to make those pictures pop. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys learn something. And, and if you guys wonder where I get these amazing stocks, it's from Envato Elements. Use the link somewhere here in the screen to get a subscription annually for 174 euros or monthly for 1450 and you can cancel subscription if it for some reason wasn't good for you. Anyway, let's start the tutorial. So I made this fan-based Metal Gear Solid poster for the character Quiet. Thanks to the lovely Khaleesi Bomb cosplayer, we got this awesome figure. I am now gonna go through the basics in Camera Raw and how I use it. Let's start off what I always do before I start to use the Camera Raw. So, what we wanna do is make a new layer above all the existing layers except for overlays and maybe also the text layers that we have here so i'm gonna check what are the text layers move the layer over there okay so next up what we want to do is make this a whole picture because camera raw filter does not work on a layer that isn't confined like if i now try to use camera raw filter it's an empty layer and well you can't do anything with it so let's go back in this new layer we are gonna press ctrl or command on a mac the alt key holding them in and the shift key and press the letter e this will combine all the layers that are that are underneath this layer let's undo this by pressing ctrl z and if you do hold only ctrl and shift and e it's gonna compact everything and the layers aren't there anymore. This is a destructive method and I do not recommend this. That's why we also hold in Alt key when pressing E and that makes the layer of a full consistent layer but you also have the options of all the layers that we made this actual artwork with. When we are in this layer, I'm gonna hold in Alt and drag above it to copy it again. Then I'm gonna hide this first layer and the second layer that we have, we are going to filter and camera raw filter or you can press Shift, Control or Command on a Mac plus A. Now, as we are in this filter, we can see in the top here a histogram. I won't go to detail how I use the histogram when I color correct now because this is for the camera raw filter for beginners. So let's start with the basic. Underneath the basic category we have temperatures, tints and different kind of exposures, highlights, shadows, contrast as you see. Then we have a clarity option, a sharpening option actually with the texture, clarity and dehaze. And lastly, we have vibrance and saturation. Now, in the temperature, a base rule in photography or filmography in temperatures are that if something is modern or in the future, then it's a bluer color. Sci-fi, for example, is blue. And the opposite, if it's history or something that has happened before, it's yellow. Flashbacks, for example, all often uses yellow tints. Now, in this one, I will still go to the yellow side just a bit because this is a dominant color. Well, orange actually and, and red. So that's why I'm gonna use the tint also and 
move it towards the magenta side. So what I often use is I drag the exposure down a little, not much. These dials are very sensitive. So for example, the contrast dial, if I drag it all the way to minus 100, we get this grayish feel. Up, we get this really high contrasted black and white. A small trick how to reset the dial is holding the dial and press Alt and double click. So for example, if we put the contrast in minus 74 and I press the Alt key and double click, it will reset. It won't reset the rest of the dial. And then we have some sharp Sharpening dials, texture clarity and dehaze. Lastly, we have vibrance and saturation. Now, in the temperature, first off, we have white balance. Now, I rarely, rarely use this one because we make our own compositions. So in our mind, we already know what we want, right? Or if we don't, well, I can't really help you in being creative. That's something that comes with experience. So white balance is good if you only are gonna color correct normal photographs that is that are, that are taken. It's very simple. You use the eyedropper tool and select widest area of the picture that you think is the most exposed part of the picture. So for example, here it would be in the helicopter's explosion in the middle, probably. By holding the shift key, you can select more than one point of reference. We won't use this method in today's tutorial. We will adjust with the help of the dials. When it comes to exposure, I often drag it down because I, I find that all the art that I use, unless it's a dark scene, are overexposed before the camera roll. So not much, just a hint down like so. And the same with the whites and the blacks. I make the blacks less filling and the whites less dominant. You can play around with these dials however you like. Shadows and highlights are something I hardly ever touch, but sometimes I make the shadows a little darker to define and the highlights also a little darker because it gives more fill to the picture so you destroy so much with high highlights let me do this in a time lapse and we get right back to sharpening the picture okay so next up in the basics we have texture and I often just add texture about the value is uh, around 10 5 to 10 not much more than that if you do more than that it starts to look unnatural and clarity uh, about same around half the texture dehazing is something I rarely do if ever vibrance and saturation i just drag in underneath zero both not much but some just to just to make the picture less of a cartoon feel and more of a realistic feel now this this is for photo manipulations so i i guess saturations and vibrations can be turned up if if you have a cartoon picture for example so next up we have the curve and the curve adjustment is uh, a, a very fine adjustment and you should be a little careful with it because using the curves can add or take away a lot from the picture however if you want something to look more contrasty without adding too much a s curve is the way to go so on the black side or the dark side we drag a little down and on the light side we press a little up however this particular artwork has well quite monochromatic colors monochromatic means it's in the same color range i will probably go through color tutorial in a later video but for now monochromatic means that you have let's say this sienna and we have many different versions of this sienna in this picture so what i'm gonna focus at is more the shadows that they aren't overwhelming so let's add a little light to the dark take away from the white just a hint in the red and cyan channel 
you can add red or cyan, simply as that. The curve adjustment works in a way that the left side is the shadow area or the darker parts, lower exposures, and the right side is the higher exposures. So if you want something that looks chromatic, for example, you can add this effect by adding red to the shadows and cyan to the highlights. With the green channel, we have this toxic green and this very strong magenta. These styles are often some that I use when I have uh, these uh, dominant colors. So for example, now we have a yellow color over here and I want this yellow to pop a little. So what I'm gonna do is make an S-curve in this yellow. Not, not too much, just a hint. Output and input values you can also add as the numbers, of course. Next up is the details panel. So in the details, we have sharpening and noise reduction and color noise reduction. These are often used when you take a photo and you are correcting the photo because you have used a too high ISO, for example. If you are taking a photograph in the dark and you use an high ISO value. The picture will get all these kind of highlighted pixels and red and green pixels all over the place because the camera sensor does not know how to work with the information it gets because there's not enough light for the sensor. That's photography. I often don't need to use it because when we make a photo manipulation we are using photos that already are fixed. Using stock footage from stock libraries are often pictures that already are in fine condition. So the detail menu we can jump over. We, we don't need to fixate on this one. The color mixer I use in the adjust HSL that stands for hue saturation and illumination instead of colors because hardly you want to change the color in the picture unless there's something that you want to define for example some a magic effect that you want to be a specific color. In HSL, we can go through all these. So in the hue, you have these channels, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. So for example, over here, we have the colors pretty okay already, but she has, Quiet has some green in her equipment, right? And this explosion over here is yellow. Now, I want to make this explosion more orangey. So I'm gonna use the orange and the yellow dial to make it a more yellow and orange. And the green, I want to be more to the blue side, but the aqua more to the green side. So we get this green to show a little more. We will do the same with the saturation. The less saturation you have, the more gray the color will be. It will be more washed out, per se, and less over. Opaque. Now in the luminance we have illuminating situation from the actual explosion, right? So I am gonna add a little more luminance to the orange and the yellow, but now I'm gonna be very careful so I don't illuminate the whole scene. The last part of this is all and here you can go through all the dials one by one. Next up, the color grading tool. This one adds color to the picture. So the mid-tones can be around white, so that means neutral tones. Shadows we see have a little bit of purple in them, right? So let's add some purple indigo to the shadow. And complementary colors to purple and blue are orange. So the highlight should be orange or yellow. So around here somewhere. Complementary means the opposite too. So in this case, in this color wheel, it would be a more greener yellow, but we are gonna use the orange to add in the highlights. Now with these dials, we need to be a little careful because they add a lot to the picture very quickly. And unless we like colors, we keep it close by to the white side, okay? Same with the shadows. As you can see, it adds a lot. It could be a nice touch, but for now, I'm gonna keep it pretty close to the whites. The last dial in this menu are the blending and balance dials. 
and blending means how much shadow, highlight and midtones are blended together. And balance is the balance between shadow and light. So if you take away value from the balance, you add more shadow to the picture. And if you add more value, you add more light. The color comes back. So this is basically the same as the hue and saturation, but it touches only the defined highlights and shadows that you have chosen. Next up we have the optics tool and this tool is distorting the whole image. Either you can get a fisheye effect by taking away from the value or you get this warp effect by adding value. Now in this case we won't do either. Vignette gives a blacker surrounding of the whole picture. It vignettes the picture or gives a lighter vignette. So adding value gives a white vignette and taking away brings a black one. Now a basic maneuver to get a picture to be more focused. You add a very 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 slight black vignette and that does a psychological thing in human's eyes to draw to the center. We will come to these composition rules in a later tutorial video. However, vignetting is making kind of a frame in a frame. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my past self right here and go to the defringe mode. Defringing means you use the eyedropper tool to pick specific parts of the picture if you need something that needs corrections. When we are making photo manipulations, there's hardly any correctioning needed. For this tutorial, we won't touch this more to detail, but I will in a future tutorial go through more specifically what all you can do in the camera raw filter. We have all these other options over here also. Anyway, let's go back to the tutorial. Geometry does the same as distortion, but more defined. You can either distort vertically or horizontally. Rotate the picture. Aspect ratio, you can change the aspect ratio. If you, for example, have a artwork that is so-called moon heads. So you have made an artwork, but you haven't seen that you actually made it a little too high or a little too low. So it was a little pressed when you made it, or it was a little stretched out. So all the faces are long, you know, then you can use the aspect ratio to correct this scaling Same thing. It's it's just zooming in zooming out the offset X and Y is where the picture will be on the canvas There are also these grid versions of of these distortions. Uh, they are already defined values We are not gonna use any of these for this artwork the scale will be 100 and we will keep it as this effects i haven't really used effects ever because it's not my type of of usage in in my art but you can add grain so you can add more noise to the picture by adding grain you can watch here let's go up to the sky part for example and when you add grain you get this noise in this picture and well i guess it's one kind of effect that someone likes but i want this to be a normal picture vignetting again here is a stronger vignette than before you have the darker one that brings picture together be very careful with these dials because they give or take very fast if you want to make some kind of let's say you have made a scene where the person has just blacked out or is just about to black out then this vignette would be fine because you get the feel that eyes are closing and also the white vignette well something dreamy something i don't know it it's all up to your imagination how you use these i do not use these that often i may add a little black vignette to the final piece afterwards okay and calibration simply put is how the program thinks that the camera uses the colors so if you think that this red, for example, is it's not orange enough, then yeah, let's move the dial to the orange part or the opposite to the red part and so on. I often keep these pretty much 
around zero. However, let's add a little orange to this one and take away from the saturation. And that's the last one in camera raw. After this, we press OK. Now Photoshop will do its thing and you have before and after. The good thing with this is now we can copy this layer, hide it and on this before layer. If there's something that I want to bring back from the first version, I can just mask this. I can add the group of text that has not changed and the overlays and it still keeps the same vibe but I have changed the overall picture to uh, I would say better version now this is how I use camera raw the tutorial is over but hang on because if you want to know how I made this and watch the time-lapse video it will come now
Okay guys, so that was the tutorial in how I, Double Art Angel, use the camera raw filter. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like this video, comment down below what you think. And if you maybe have a future tutorial that you would like me to do, then that also. Stay tuned for more, I will start making these videos more consistently again. And if you guys like my kind of art, you can also follow me on Instagram as double underscore art angel or the Viant art as double arch angel. This was a blast. Anyway, I'm double art angel and I catch you in the next one.